And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show. He is a local baseball coaching giant. And I guess he's a, a free agent right now. It's Ralph Grajeda uh, out of Ukaipa High School. And coach, we just saw earlier this week, you, you put in your resignation that you're stepping down after seven really incredible seasons, which included a CIF championship for Ukaipa. So I know you, you penned a, a short message that you put on social media, but if people are watching the Inland Sports Show and they don't know any you know, details about this, you know, why now? Why, why step down at Ukaipa when you have such a good thing going? So this was not a life decision by, by any stretch of the imagination. We, um, like most of the state, most districts in the state of California, we have budget cuts and they're real. And I think you know, in, in the media's eye, you know, we're teachers and that's, our, I mean, sorry, we're coaches and that's our persona and that's our passion. But at the end of the day, most of us are teachers. And so we saw in, and we saw budget cuts coming. We heard that was going to happen. And, you know, and most like most teachers, we think, hey, you know, it'll come and go and we'll be okay. But we had 32, I want to say about 32 teachers that were rift and myself and, and um, a fellow colleague, the, the wrestling coach, we were rift. And so we went to a school board meeting. Um, you know, the next school board meeting and talked about it. We had families advocate for us. And so um, we were both fortunate that we got jobs, you know, we got families and mortgage and stuff like that. And um, we were displaced to elementary schools. And the plan was to go teach to the elementary school, work out the details, and then get to campus um, a little bit later and for six period. And so that was a process in itself. I mean, we got the news late January, and then it was about, February, we kind of waited, and then per our contracts as a teacher, you know, February, uh, March 15th or mid-March, uh, you find out, like, you know, what, what your assignment is or what's going on, and I heard it was going to be an elementary school, and then, you know, as I've been through this before, being an educator, they kind of go through the numbers again, and then, hey, we'll be back on campus and that type of thing, but that didn't happen, and so um, the reality was I was going to be off campus. And so the next piece that kind of solidified my decision was I was waiting um, again to see if the numbers would change or it would bring me back on campus and um, saw that it wasn't going to happen. And so I sat on this and I didn't say anything to my, my families or my program because, you know, for high school baseball, you know, the last couple of weeks in April, you know, you're playing, usually you're playing for a championship and trying to get in the postseason. So I didn't want to worry with them and I didn't want to disrupt what we were trying to do. We were in a dog, we were in a dog fight this year for that um, league, league championship. And so then about a week, two weeks into it, um, before the end of the season, I found that there was not going to be or slated to be six-period athletics. And I thought long and hard about that. You know, baseball at Ukaipa um, is a huge thing. It is a – it's one of the reasons why I came on board and left my college position. It, it's, a, uh, it's a huge staple in the community. And for us not to have um, our student athletes in six period, it just really put us at a disadvantage. I mean, we don't have lights on our field. Uh, we're in the same position as a softball coach. Everything would have to be after school, even if there was six period for us. You know, we would get, you know, you've got football and you've got um, soccer and track and stuff like that. We have lights for them. And then there's lights in the gym for basketball and, and volleyball and those types of sports. But for, for us and for softball, we don't have lights. And so for, six, for not having six period, it just changed the culture of our program right away. And, and um, you know, being on campus is, is a culture thing. And I think um, that there's a lot of pride with baseball in Ukaipa, especially on campus. It's an earned thing. So it just really made me think, am I going to be able to give the same product to the families and, and, and players that have committed themselves and quite frankly, have, have come to Ukaipa because of our program. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, I couldn't, I didn't see a way to get it done. Not to the level that we, not to the level of standard that my parents liked um, or would want. And it was, um, it, it just seemed very um, problematic trying to be off campus, not having a six period on um, baseball, not having an identity on campus. And I hope it changes. I just, um, the level that we're at and the level that we've played, I just don't see, I didn't see a way to make that happen. So I felt I owed it to our players and families to, to mm -hmm. kind of tell them what was going on and, and, and let them make a decision on what they want to do with, the, with their son's futures, because our kids are a little bit different. Um, these are high level athletes. You're talking about USA baseball players. You're talking about um, drafted kids. We just uh, had number 31, 32 and 33 college commit 
these are kids are going to go play college baseball. So we've had 33 in the last seven years. Um, it's just a high level program and not to be able to offer that same product was at the end of the day, the decision why I did that. And I'm telling you, I lost sleep over it. I, um, I sat on that decision for a while and I was just hoping things were going to change. And, um, as calm as I am right now with it, I've already gone through that whole cycle of grief and it just, um, it just guts me to think about it, but it was just something I felt, um, I needed to do. And coach, just so we're clear, this is not a retirement, right? So, I mean, you're still interested in coaching. I mean, high school, college, I mean, right now is, is it just kind of a blank canvas in terms of what your future might look like in terms in, in baseball, at least? It's a, it's, it's a hiccup. That's it. My passion is coaching. Um, I, I love working with young people. I love helping them get to where they want to be. Um, I think I've done a really good job of helping families and players develop and, and, and get to college. Um, I know my why as a coach and as a teacher, and that's to be an advocate for young people. And, and my high school coach did that for me, and that's exactly why I'm doing this. My high school coach actually, incidentally, is the uh, athletic director at um, St. John Bosco High School and Vince Brown. And so I've never – that was – he was very impressed upon me when I was a you know 16 to 18-year-old young man. So coaching is mentorship. And I absolutely love coaching. It's my passion. And to answer your question, no, I, I no. Mm -mm. All right. So, not to put you on the spot, but is is the door left open just a little bit for a possible return to Ukaipo, or or maybe is that an even an option in terms of what you are looking for in your baseball future? I love Ukaipo. I love everything that we've put together. It's. From the families that got involved with us, the student athletes, the community, it, you couldn't ask for a better scenario, but so much has changed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, if we can get it back to that situation, and, and believe me, I'm not afraid of hard work at all. Not one bit. Our facility is totally different than when we got it. And, and, we, and I, I truly feel we raised um, raised the bar here at UKIPA, playing the type of teams that we played in the tournaments that we've gone on from you know, the Boris Classic a couple of times to the NHSI and then, you know, winning at the D2 level, which is a really tough thing to do. Um, I'm not afraid of that. It just, I, I just, I don't know if that dynamic's in place. Those things are above my pay grade. Those are school district decisions. And believe me, I've, I've talked to everybody I can about that. So um, I'm always open to it. I just, um, I'm trying to work with reality right now. So coach, let's assume for the moment, you know, you're leaving Ukaipa, you'll end up coaching somewhere else. When you look back on this, you know, maybe when you're an old man one day, but when you look back on this seven year stretch that you've had with the Thunderbirds, what will you remember? Because there was a lot of league titles, there was the CIF championship. You mentioned some of the prestigious tournaments you guys went to, players being drafted, um, yeah. Division One, you know, scholarships. I mean, what are, what are some of the things that you'll remember if, when you look back on this seven year stretch? You know, it was, you know, it's one of, some of the things you look back on, it, and it's not the, you know, the old saying, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And so a lot of the fun stuff that we've done is is just, you know, like the downtime. Like when we went to, when we went to North Carolina for the NHSI, like we visited like three or four different colleges. And it was just great to see our kids like on North Carolina State's field or North Carolina and, you know, just stuff like that. And it just, this, just hanging out with the kids and being on the bus and then, in that same trip, you know, we had USA Baseball pick us up in a charter bus, and it was just for Ukaipa or at the airport, and just things like that. And then, you know, meeting coaches from across the country, you know, and that that was just just a great thing. And then, you know, the, the big tournaments that we've been in, and you know, when we won, I, I remember our first our first year when we when we um, we beat uh, Corona Del Mar in round two, and I remember people in the stands asking, "Where's Ukaipa?" Like, where is you, Kaipa? And they're asking, they're asking our players, like, where's you, Kaipa? And, and I remember Bradley Heacock saying, well, we'll show you. So we kind of, but just, just stuff like that and working with families and getting calls on draft days. You know, we get in call on draft days about players with major league clubs and, you know, and then, you know, helping kids get to college and, you know, those, those things. Um, one of the coolest things we had was, uh, you know, I was, I was really green, you know, coming from the college ranks when, when we won, um, at, at Cal State Fullerton and our way back, we got, we hit the 10, we were coming from the 215, we hit the 10 and we had, a, um, you know, we, we had somebody, uh, they guided us in. It was a, a couple of fire trucks from Ukaipa and they guided us in and it was uh, all of the families were on the boulevard and, you know, that's such a 
that's a special thing. That's a, that's only a thing that a small town can do. It to to let you know that. Um, I remember at one point um, when we were in that game, there was one one tie with Beckman. And congratulations to Beckman this year. Um, we were one one in the fifth or something like that, and um, we started rallying and, and we put up a, a seven spot. And I remember looking up in the stands, and, and I'm brand new, and I, and I don't really know the the local chants or the local fight songs. And, and there was that "Go you Kaipa, go you Kaipa, go go," and you could hear it. When I looked up, and it's a big it's a big stadium, and I, I'm I'm telling you, I, and Beckman was right down the road. I grew up in Tustin, but it seemed to me there were three quarters of that stadium was there for you Kaipa, and it was just, you know, those are things you can't you can't uh, you can't duplicate. You know, it, it's a uh, it's those things. It's the relationships. It's watching. Um, during batting practice in front of major league clubs after after Jacob Reimer plays plays three games and hits three home runs against Redlands East Valley or and then we throw a batting I throw a batting practice because there's brass in the stands for him to help him get drafted in the fourth round or or watching Luke Shear, you know, you know, d- develop and, and become one of the highest paid free agents as a as a as a high school kid, you know, just stuff like that or you know, Dan, and recently, Danny Arambula and Wes Hickey in our, in, in our program, and those are my kids from their freshman year on getting 100 hits. It's uh, it's just a special thing, you know. And, and I know other teachers and coaches go with this, but, you know, when you're when you're getting phone calls and coaches is like, hey, can you give me a letter of recommendation or coach I got married or coach I got the job? And it just, just solidifies why you're coaching, you know. And I'm not even, not even mentioning winning. You know, yeah. it's just the relationships. Yeah, Ukaipa certainly is a special place. You mentioned it, uh, that kind of small town feel, and it is definitely a baseball community. Well, Coach, uh, listen, really appreciate you jumping on here on the Inland Sports Show. I got a feeling we're going to see you pop up somewhere <laughs> in, in the future yeah. on a baseball diamond somewhere. So uh, please keep us posted because I know you'll uh, you'll be in some somebody's dugout. Yep, I really appreciate you covering the Thunderbirds and uh, embracing our program. So keep doing that, and um, thank you for your time, and I'm sure I'll see you down the road. You got it. That's Coach Ralph Grajeda joining us here on the Inland Sports Show. Inland Sports.